Hello everyone and welcome once again to Sports Talk 920. Didn't quite think I was on there. Um, once again going low here, um, but just a quick announcement. Um, because of that, we will have our NFL preview show as we promised we would do that before the season started on Monday. I'm making sure to tune into that. And um, also, if I sound distracted by the show here, it's because I'm doing a mock draft. I want to see if this is done. I'm trying to draft all Wisconsin Badgers in my team. Um, and it is proving quite difficult. And I'm sure these guys are, whoever in this mock draft here, are, are kind of wondering um, what the hell's going on. Um, but uh, I'll, let, I'll let you know the final results of that team <laughs> once I get done here. Um, there, there's going to be a couple positions. Um, I, I don't think I'll be able to get um, the a pa or a Badger player. So I'm thinking for like a kicker. Uh, there's no Wisconsin Badger kicker in the NFL, so I'm thinking I'm going to just have to go with Mason Crosby. Um, so it should be interesting. I I'm surprised that, that no one's going like, what the hell are you doing? Um, I'll give you the results on that, um, when that when this draft is completed. Right now, oop, I'm up to draft. Draft to Mason Crosby. I wanted to make sure I got him. He He's actually one guy I'm worried about getting. The, the rest of the Badgers here I think I'm, I'm pretty – pretty set on getting um uh so yeah I'll, I'll keep you updated on that as as we go along here it should be uh should be pretty fun pretty interesting um what's going on here um anyway uh you know of course we do have our fantasy football league we we're already up to 18 teams this is kind of crazy i'm just going to kind of see who who um is still going to be participating who's not you know we'll probably get on you know next year for two of teams um, but, uh, everyone's back that participated last year. We're up to 18 teams. It, that's going to be nuts it's getting down there and windling down to the smallest of or backups, the really big backups. A lot of super picks I think are going to have to be made there to be competitive in that league. So that should be interesting. I, I've never been in more than I think a 14 team league at one time. And that can get kind of crazy too. Um, so we'll see how, we'll see how that works. Um, but anyway, the big news in NASCAR, we'll hit NASCAR quick before the, um, uh, we get too far here. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was announced today. You know, it was kind of disappointing not to see him in that, that Grey Ghost car at Darlington. Um, I think we talked a little bit about that last week uh, or a few weeks ago. But uh, Dale Jr. is not going to be running any more races in 2014, or 14, 16. Don't know why I said 14 there. Um, and... You know, when thinking about this, I think this is probably the the best way for um, Dale Jr. to go. I think we, we've kind of hit on this, um, you know, uh, a few weeks ago or last week too, when when we when Jr. kind of had his his other two race expand or ex you know delay extended. Um, you know, at this point, you know, there's no point of coming back. Um, and, and really risking a, any further injury, you know, there, he's not going to be competing for the championship. You know, I'm sure it eats up, eats up Dale Earnhardt Jr. live that he can't be, be out there, um, racing at the moment. Um, but I, I think long-term, you know, he's, he realistically has a few good years left in him. You know, he's, he's 40, you know, if he wants to race till he's 45, three years, maybe even four, I, you know, I don't know. It depends on it. He, he might maybe extend it a little bit if he can come back healthy. Um, you, you know, it's, it's the best move. And I think, if, you know, although he's, he's probably missing out, he's probably not even going to, to think about doing something like this, but, you know, kind of, as I said last week, um, you know, if he wanted to progress into it, you know, with these remaining, you know, 12, 12, 12 weeks that are in, you know, going to be in the NASCAR season, maybe it'd be best for him to um, just kind of race these truck series races and, and uh, or these Xfinity series races, you know, shorter events that, you know, maybe can test it out or maybe even now just build a late model and go out there and drive at some old tracks, you know, during the off season. That might be some other option for him too, just to make sure that, that, you know, you know, hopefully he doesn't get re-injured, but um, something that that I think will uh, um, you know help him along, make sure that you know he can handle the vibrations in the race car. You know, it gets it gets loud, it gets crazy, um, and 
you know, we'll see what happens there. So, um, you know, speedy recovery, Dale Earnhardt Jr., you know, if, if and at this point now, we think, you know, basically missing the whole second half of the season, um, if it ends up coming down where he's not coming back, I'm going to be partly prepared for that, to be honest with you, um, because – it's something that could happen if if whatever is going on doesn't change he might have to uh you know think about hanging hanging the cleats up and and you know you wonder if nascar is ready for it um you know still going to you know going to the race last week at michigan there was a lot of of uh of dale jr gear out in the sand and, and, you know, you're going to see that, and a lot of it is, you know, Gordon and, and Dale Jr. That's still about 90% of, of what people are wearing. And at the end of the day, um, you got to think, like, man, oh, man, you know, once Dale Jr. leaves, what the hell is going to, you know, what the hell are these guys going to go for? You know, I think this weekend, you know, as far as NASCAR is concerned, this past weekend, I, I think maybe really put, uh, you, you know, I think it was a good sign for NASCAR for, you know, maybe that, that post Dale Jr. era because, you know, you got to see different winners. I, I think, you know, the guys that, that are fans of Dale Jr. now, they might not want to go to, you know, the Jimmy Johnsons, the Kyle Bushes, the Kevin Harvicks. You know, some of those, some of those guys, you know, are listening off Kansas. They're going to be gone, you know, relatively quickly too. So, um, you know, to see guys like, Kyle Larson finally get that first win. Um, Chase Elliott still fighting for that win too. You know, I was I was pretty excited um, when it looked like like Chase Elliott had that win in the bag, but unfortunately um, wasn't able to do so. Spun his tires in the final restart. But it's also cool to see uh, Kyle Larson. You know, a guy that's been chasing that win for you know a few years now. He was able to uh, pull off the pull off the victory there. So congratulations to him. You know, he got his first win. Michael McDowell. Um, um, I'm still doing my, my draft here. Sorry. Michael McDowell, uh, you know, winning, you know, in, in Elkhart Lake, uh, getting his first career win. You know, I don't know if, you know, that's probably not going to rattle off a bunch of wins for him in the cup series being in the equipment that he's got. But, um, and it's good to see a guy that, that basically never really had that good of equipment to run in. He, he's ran a few races, I believe, a few years ago at Elkhart Lake, too, in the uh, 18 car for Joe Gibbs and, and had some pretty solid runs. But, um, you know, really doesn't get doesn't get many chances to to uh, to get into victory lane. So, um, you know, congratulations to to uh, him on that one. So. Um, that's pretty cool. And Brett Moffat, that was, that was probably the, the highlight of the weekend going to the truck race. Um, you know, the wife and I, um, weren't going to go until we saw that Kyle Busch was, was not going to be in the event. So I thought, well, this could be a pretty good race. And, you know, if you were a fan of Toyotas, probably still would upset you, but, but watching that race kind of felt a lot like a restrictor plate race. And, uh, so it's kind of cool where, you know, there's a lot of passing and of course for the pass for the lead when, Timothy Peters and William Byron were battling for the lead uh, going down into turn one. Brett Moffat sitting there third. He had his teammate, Timothy Peters, right in the mix with the win. And Timothy Peters, he's trying to make the chase. He's trying to win a championship. Brett Moffat, you know, this is like his third or fourth race in that truck, goes out, powers by them both on the outside, and ends up taking the checkered flag. So it was, I think, the first time in, in NASCAR history that, you know, or probably since, obviously, the, the first – first ever NASCAR race um, that you've had a weekend of, of first time winners in, in every series. So uh, um, I think that brings a little bit of uh, excitement for um, NASCAR fans that you, these guys, these young guys that, that, you know, Kyle Larson, I mean, if he didn't get this win tonight, you know, he, you know, once you start seeing the Jimmy Johnson's and, and all those other guys kind of, kind of weed out, you're probably going to see them in victory lane more and more often. Um, you know, and, and the biggest thing too, you know, the car for Kyle Larson seemed to be fast, but it was almost like you could tell, I kept going to, uh, uh, kept going to the wife. Like every time they pit, uh, Kyle Larson had a little bit of a lead. I go by, I, I bet you green flag pit stops. Um, when they come out, Chase Elliott's going to be ahead. 
and that's going to be another obstacle for for him to face when when uh um when uh you know that comes about is that I, I you know he's they're going to have some of these young guys in good equipment you know uh, Eric Jones what what equipment is he going to um you know and, and I think Kyle Larson too probably eventually will um when you see maybe guys like Jimmy Johnson Dale Jr Casey Kane some of those guys retire you, you think he might up in a little bit better equipment, you know, some of these prestigious rides open up or if Danica ever gives her prestigious ride up, maybe, maybe uh, that will happen. But uh, looking forward to uh, Darlington this weekend. Um, always a fun weekend when they have these throwback cars uh, going out. And, and even when the Xfinity series, it seems like they've, they've uh, kind of picked up their game a little bit more than, than they have in years past as well. So uh, that's that's pretty cool to see too. Um, pretty pumped up to uh, to see that. So uh, be sure to tune in Saturday night and uh, Sunday night for the the throwback races. If you know, if even if you were a an old NASCAR fan that's kind of tuned out for the past few years, it's it's kind of cool to flip on on uh, you know that race and and see some of the the paint schemes. You know, back even in the mid '90s or you know like like the mac tonight cars kind of cool to see and even some of these old school ones from the 60s it's kind of cool to see all the different eras and and kind of honoring the past and and teaching teaching some of the the new nascar fans um some of the history of the sport that maybe they they haven't really kept up on so neat kind of like the throwback weekend and and i hope this is a a tradition that that they can continue to go because I mean, really, with all the paint schemes they've ran in, you know, in the in the 2000s and and the 90s and stuff like that, and, and you know, now they're starting to hit like J.D. McBuffy, you know, kind of a no-name guy. Um, um, A.J. Allmendinger's team, I can't remember, it was like the 1973 Rookie of the Year, can't even name the guy that that they're honoring their scheme for. There's so many different things, you know. Alan Kowicki is getting honored by two different teams, with Greg Biffle and Regan Smith. So that's that's pretty pretty awesome as well. So um, and, and just gets to I think it's something they could do for years and years. Oh, Bobby Labonte when um, they announced Joey Logano's scheme, which was in honor of one of his old uh, Bush series schemes. Uh, he's like, at some point we're gonna run out of these. I'm like, man, oh man, you, you think you, you you continue to do this, and then some of the schemes that we're running to to today are gonna be throwback schemes, and they can just plaster them on there and and go from there. So it's. Uh, pretty cool i mean even even some of the things like like what uh um ricky stenhouse jr did at bristol and kind of ran the the uh brian clausen fast and all scheme you know sponsorships can do that too with maybe some schemes that weren't up front running paint schemes that that a lot of people are familiar with but maybe some of the diehard fans some of the paint scheme nerds maybe such as myself would get into so that, that's kind of cool but uh, you know, a slew of NFL news was will just sl- seamless, seamlessly transition into this. Um, uh, of course, uh, getting ready for the season, some of the, some big injuries happening, and maybe a big one for the NFC North as uh, Teddy Bridgewater went down with a gruesome knee injury in practice. And uh, now the Vikings kind of right now it appears you know, we still have final cuts that are, that are going to be coming up tomorrow. You know, some teams that have been making making their cuts. Um, you know, recently here, but uh, it's uh, it's inter- it's gonna be interesting to see what what some of these guys uh guys do because I think that hinges a lot of what uh, the the Packers are gonna do, and you know we'll see we'll see what happens, but uh, or not the, not the Packers, sorry, the Vikings sorry, still distract still distracted in my draft here. I I totally apologize. Um, but, uh, anyway, um, the Vikings still kind of right now, still going with, uh, um, still going with the, you know, Sean Hill, you know, they're kind of riding, riding with him right now. Um. And seeing what see what happens there, but uh, um, I think they would be all right overall. And maybe if they get a guy like Josh McCown, Colin or Colin Kaepernick, if they can get them off of waivers, 